Now I'm really excited about today's video because for me it was one of the most exciting experiences of medical school, setting foot into a surgical theatre for the very first time. And today that is the topic of discussion, surgical theatres and the room where it happens as it were, but before we move on into today's video guys, I need to once again ask you to like, comment and subscribe, it really helps out the channel and keep developing the channel so we've got brand new videos for you guys each and every week, so make sure you hit the little bell icon as well to make sure you don't miss any new videos. But surgical theatres, so surgical theatres or operating theatres or operating rooms or the OR if you're a fan of Grey's Anatomy. These are the places where surgical operations ultimately take place and I am absolutely sure that all of you who are coming to medical school at whatever stage will experience a surgical theatre at least once. For some people that is absolutely more than enough, for me I could never get enough. But what actually takes place on the inside of a surgical theatre and why are we there as med students? Well, if you'll remember, I previously covered in my video on anatomy labs and how we learn anatomy at medical school, why it's so important that medical students and junior doctors have a good understanding of the anatomy that underlies a vast, vast majority of medicine. And nowhere really is this gonna be more relevant than in surgery, where we are directly manipulating a person's anatomy in some way in order to manage or fix their problem. Now, historically, these places were called theaters because medical students and other onlookers, often members of the public, would gather round in a theater setting and watch the surgeon operate and do what they were doing. Obviously, times have changed and we no longer really do the public spectacle aspect of surgery that we have done throughout history, but certainly as a medical student, very little has changed. It's still a core part of your experience and you're gonna be there watching surgery. So I don't wanna bore you any further. Let's just jump into an example of a thing you might see. Let's take a simple case like an infected inflamed gallbladder, a cholecystitis. You don't need a gallbladder to survive, thrive, or otherwise do well. So in many cases, we simply elect to remove the gallbladder, the surgical term for which is a cholecystectomy. Another term that you will have heard floating about is a lap coli or a laparoscopic cholecystectomy because nowadays most of these procedures are not done with a big open incision and the surgeons go in and take it out with scalpels most of the time now it's done laparoscopically using telescopic or I suppose laparoscopic instruments where we can make tiny incisions in a person's abdomen put our instruments in with a camera and manipulate everything from the outside. So why do we do this? Well, it not only fixes the problem in the short term because we are taking out the inflamed, infected gallbladder, but obviously if you don't have a gallbladder anymore, it stops the problem recurring. You can't have an inflamed gallbladder if you don't have a gallbladder. It is an incredibly common procedure, probably one of the most common procedures in the UK, and you are almost certainly going to see at least one as a medical student. And you definitely should attempt to see at least one, and we'll talk about why. In this case, it's because the anatomy is relatively quite basic in terms of what you're expected to know to be able to understand the operation and it has some very examinable landmarks associated with it. So what do I mean by anatomical landmarks? Well, just as sailors and explorers and anyone else who is moving across large distances would use landmarks in order to work out where they are and orient themselves with respect to wherever they're trying to go in the world, surgeons in much the same way rely on landmarks because the inside of the body is a pretty alien, often confusing environment where everything is a bit pink, a bit gooey, a bit slimy, and, and everything looks much the same. And especially if we're using instruments with cameras on them and we're not looking directly into the body with our eyes, then it is easy to become lost. Which way is up, which way is down, where's left, where's right? What structure is this that we're looking at? Is that different to this pink thing over here? Is that a bone? Which bone is it? So returning to our example of a cholecystectomy, one of the most common features that you'll be asked about is something called the cystohepatic triangle or Callot's triangle. I'm probably butchering the French name, Callot, Callo, however you like. But the point is, why do we need to find this space? What is it? Well, within this triangle, the cystohepatic triangle, we will find the cystic artery, which is the blood supply to the gallbladder. 
naturally it makes sense that if we're going to remove someone's gallbladder that we should cut off or clamp the blood supply to it because otherwise when we cut it out there'll simply be a lot of bleeding into the abdominal cavity which would be a bit messy and we don't really want. And because we know that the cystic artery is fairly reliably within this space that we call the cystohepatic triangle which has borders that we can actually look for, surgeons during the operation are going to be trying to identify the borders of this triangle. And it's examples like this that show that even if you have no interest in surgery whatsoever, that's absolutely fine. You want to be a cardiologist, you want to be a paediatrician, that's absolutely fine. Not everyone likes surgery, but you need to understand the anatomy and especially when you're going to watch operations, it's important to do some pre-reading and try and identify these structures in theatre so you understand what's actually going on because it benefits your own learning. Now, the main key thing to remember about operating theatres is that they are clean environments, one of the cleanest environments within the average hospital. Because during surgery, especially if we're making big incisions, perhaps opening someone's abdomen or cracking open their chest, we are exposing the insides of someone's body to the outside world. And as you can imagine, that presents an enormous infection risk. So there are several things that happen within surgical theatres in order to minimise the risk of infection. One thing you will notice is they often use controlled air pressure around the surgical field, the surgical field being the operating table and the area in the middle of the room. Air is blown down and away from the operating table so that dust and other particles move to the outside of the room where they can be extracted safely rather than everything just settling straight down in the middle on the patient. Secondly, everyone who is stood within that surgical field around the table, so this is going to be your scrub nurse, your surgeon, the assistant, anyone else who you need for the operation, they are what's called scrubbed in. So while everyone in theatre, and this includes you as a medical student, should be wearing surgical scrubs, surgical shoes, which are usually something like Crocs, which are easy to clean, and a hair cap. The people who are very close to the patient and part of the operating team will be wearing full surgical gear. So this includes, once again, scrubs, shoes, and a cap. It will also mean a face mask, and the most obvious thing that you will notice, a full surgical gown that goes from chest to toe. They will then wear two pairs of sterile gloves, one on the inside and one on the outside, which goes over the top of the arms of the gown, and often additional equipment such as loops which attach to the glasses and magnify the view of the surgeon, or something like a face visor if it's say an orthopaedic case and we're expecting bits of bone and fluids to come up into the air then that protects the face of the surgeon. And this is also why in theatres you'll see people walking around like this or with their hands like this because it means they don't touch anything and they stay sterile. And before they put on all of this gear the surgical team will go through the process of scrubbing in, where the hands are washed continuously in a very specific way, starting at the fingertips and moving up to the elbows so that the hands are washed multiple times and kept as clean as humanly possible. And assuming all of this is done correctly and all their gear is put on correctly without them touching anything, they are then clear to operate. So what can you actually do as a medical student in a surgical theatre? Well, the simple answer is at the beginning, especially when you're unfamiliar with the environment and you don't really know what's going on, just go along and watch. Surgeons by and large love to teach, they're really passionate about the anatomy and what they're doing, otherwise they wouldn't be surgeons. And when you're on your surgical placement or someone asks you to come along to theatre, you can go along and watch, make sure you're wearing your scrubs, your surgical shoes and your cap, and, and as long as you're stood outside that surgical field, you can watch, it's usually no problem. Often there will be cameras around that show you a closer view of what's going on, either if you're in a teaching theatre or instruments with cameras on are being used, you can get a really close, often inside the body view of the action, and again, looking out for that key anatomy you'll need to know for your exams. But the golden rule of surgical theatres, if you take away nothing else from this video, is do not touch anything, <laughs> especially anything that's blue anything that looks blue or has a drape over it that makes it blue or anybody who is wearing blue, 
keep your hands to yourself like this in your pockets whatever you like do not touch anything because if it's blue that usually means that it's sterile and if you contaminate anything blue if you're not scrubbed in and you've not gone through that very rigorous hand washing procedure and getting dressed in a sterile manner then you are not sterile and will contaminate anything that you touch as far as the operation is concerned so be extremely careful watch where your hands and feet are at all times always look behind you and don't touch anyone. Equally, that means that if someone in the surgical team drops something, it falls onto the floor. Do not touch it. Do not pick it up and put it back in the surgical field because if you do that, you've just contaminated the surgical field and they'll have to throw it all away, potentially re-scrub, and that's something you don't want to have caused. But on a slightly more positive note, because of course, you will be very well behaved, do what you're told and not touch anything. And as time goes on and you build more of a relationship with the surgical team and with your surgical consultant, you may in fact be asked to scrub in. This means that you yourself can go through that washing process and be part of the surgical team, stood right next to the patient, getting a really direct, close view of what's going on. In more senior years, there may even be a chance to get involved. You might be able to hold instruments, assist with the operation if the surgeon needs an extra pair of hands, or even do something like suture wounds when it comes time to close. If you are especially interested in surgery and you're thinking you might want to have a career as a surgeon, even if you're not really sure yet, I would recommend signing up for something called the e-logbook or the electronic training logbook, which is a free online secure system where you can record the details of all of the surgical cases that you've seen. And regardless of what you want to do, this can serve as evidence later down the line when it comes to applying for specialty training and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now just a final word of warning, it should go without saying, as with all things in medicine, if you've not met your consultant before or you're dealing with an unfamiliar surgeon, don't just run up to them and go, I want to scrub in, let me scrub in. It takes a bit of tact. Just take it slow, build up a friendly relationship with them, go along to a few cases, just ask if you can observe and show your enthusiasm. If they like you, they will ask if you want to scrub in, but that will only happen if and when it's appropriate. So don't go in guns blazing because all you're likely to do is piss them off and we don't really want that. So that brings us to the end of this video on surgical theatres, guys, as part of my series, Your Life at Med School. I hope you're enjoying this series. The reception has been fantastic and we've got more episodes to come. If there's anything specific you would like to see, please just let me know because I'm always looking for stuff to film. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.